Welcome to Southeast Today, our top stories tonight. Storm Eunice batters the southeast, causing major disruption. Roads blocked, trains and ferries cancelled, and thousands without power. I've been sent home today, uh, the, where I normally work. The roof is literally blown off. As gusts of almost 80 miles per hour hit the region, flights at Gatwick Airport are cancelled and landings aborted. It was slowing to come to land and then you kind of get the throttle going and you're really come, taking off again quite fast. Our team of reporters will bring you the very latest on the impact of Storm Eunice in the southeast. And I'll be bringing you the weekend weather forecast, but also taking a more detailed look at why Storm Eunice turned out to be one of the strongest storms that's hit the southeast for the last 30 years. Good evening. Hundreds of thousands of people have stayed at home today amid major travel chaos after one of the worst storms the southeast has ever seen battered the region. The Met Office issued a rare red warning over southern England as Storm Eunice brought astonishing 122 miles per hour winds to the UK. Unprecedented numbers of train services were cancelled in the southeast, along with planes grounded and roads closed, and tens of thousands of homes left without power. Well, in a moment, we'll be crossing live to our team of reporters across the patch. But first, Amanda Acast reports on the worst storm in 32 years. Plane landings aborted at Gatwick. Falling trees blocking roads and railways. <laughs> it's so bad. And turbulent seas forcing the port of Dover to close. Storm Eunice walloped the southeast today with gusts of up to 78 miles an hour. The winds caused the side of this house in Whitstable to collapse. Its owner was unharmed, but it was a shock to the neighbours. I was actually sitting on my bed teaching my students uh, and, I heard, and I felt this wall behind me here, it, it shuddered. Uh, and then there was a really loud bang. Um, so I immediately jumped up, ran to the window just, uh, just outside the door and saw my neighbour's house kind of collapsing. Uh, the whole sort of gable side of it just collapsed half into our driveway uh, and, and burying uh, the neighbour's car as well. Oh my. Across the region, trees toppled to the ground, blocking roads, smashing into gardens and crushing cars. I was shocked. I just wasn't expecting it when my mum called me and told me. I just couldn't believe it. Buildings lost scaffolding, and one of the chimneys at the Grain Power Station collapsed. No one was hurt, but it had to be taken offline. Ken Police reported five times the normal volume of 999 calls, and volunteer responders were out in force too, helping to clear the roads. Our teams have to be extremely careful because they don't know what else is going to fall down in the vicinity that they're working. Also, a number of the trees have fallen on power lines that are still live, so there's, there's risk of electrocution. In Kent, all trains were cancelled with fallen trees on every line in the county. In the space of about 25 minutes, we had six trees down on our network. But unfortunately, the, the severity of the winds and the, the sheer impact of this storm means that um, we're having to close uh, quite a lot of our routes. This is almost unprecedented. Uh, but, but as I say, we, we, we are mobilised. We're doing our absolute best to get the railway open. Thousands of colleagues are out with chainsaws, with other specialist kit, to try to get the railway back open for customers as quickly as we possibly can. This evening, 41,000 properties in Sussex and Surrey are still without power and 72,000 in Kent. You know, the challenge during the storm is, is obviously to, to repair the wires. They are they're, they're up poles, which, you know, could be 30, 40 feet high. Um, and we're not able to send staff up, up, up the poles, whether it be in a, you know, a vehicle mounted lift, um, cherry picker as people tend to know them, um, you know, it's just not safe. As the storm hit this morning, some were still out and about in Tunbridge Wells. All the trees in our road are all, like all the branches are down, so it's quite, it's quite windy, but it's nice to get some fresh air, so we're out. For every three feet I go, I'll get blown back two feet. <laughs> We'll come out for a girly day and we weren't cancelling it for nothing. But this afternoon, people in Dover were struck by the power of the wind. I've been sent home today, uh, the, where I normally work. The roof is literally blown off. So, uh, yeah, 
uh, they sent me home because it was unsafe to be there. And I thought it could be worse than this, to be honest. I know there are certain parts I've been, but I really thought, you know, this doesn't seem as bad as 87. People are losing trampolines over the over their gardens, garden sheds, bins, and uh, kids' sandpit covers. I've seen several of them. And while the worst is over, it's still a wild night ahead. Well, let's speak to Amanda, who is at Tunbridge Wells Station, which was affected by line closures. Amanda, an extraordinary day, really, for everybody. What are the authorities saying about travel and power outages tonight? Well, absolutely. We haven't seen winds like this howling through the southeast since at least 1987. Many people working on our roads and railways have never seen conditions like this before. Indeed, on southeastern trains, they had to cancel a thousand services. Um, Southern also declared a critical incident. East Sussex highways were called out to nearly 200 cases where trees had blocked roads. Kent Fire and Rescue to nearly 100 as well. Although speaking to Kent County Council's resilience team this evening, they seem to feel thankful that there haven't been any really serious incidents declared so far, no major casualties reported. But because of the strength of the winds, we know that chimneys have been damaged, trees, roots um, damaged as well, tiles and bricks loosened. So with the weather continuing to be fairly windy this weekend, there could be further disruption ahead. Thanks, Amanda. Well, let's take a closer look now then at the picture across the southeast today. As we've been hearing there from Amanda, train companies are still this evening telling passengers not to travel, with Network Rail saying all rail lines in Kent are now closed. Passengers in Sussex are being warned they may be unable to complete their journey. Stagecoach, meanwhile, suspended all bus services in Kent and East Sussex. Major roads, including the QE2 bridge at Dartford, and the Sheppey Crossing remain closed this evening, with fallen trees and accidents uh, causing blockages and delays on dozens more roads across the region. Now, the Port of Dover was temporarily closed earlier, but has now reopened. Both P&O and DFDS cancelled services for hours, and they have now resumed, but with significant delays. At Gatwick Airport, many flights are still delayed. Some arrivals have been cancelled. Passengers are being asked to allow plenty of time to get to the airport and check your flight status with the airline. Well, let's cross now to Gatwick Airport uh, and speak to Charlie Rose. Uh, so, Charlie, a disappointing day for many travellers. And, of course, it's half-term week. Well, Chrissy, after today's disruption, things are much calmer here at Gatwick Airport. The landing lights twinkling behind me there to guide aircraft safely onto the runway. A far cry from earlier in the day when the wild winds of Storm Eunice were whipping across the airport with planes struggling to land. Approaching the runway in one of the worst storms in decades. Pilots had their work cut out at Gatwick today as they battled powerful winds. Sometimes landing was just too dangerous. One passenger described how her flight from Bordeaux had to turn back after two aborted attempts. So we went down, came up again, did a little tour around and then tried the second attempt. And at that point we got to very close to the runway, really probably maybe a couple of meters above above the ground and then still you could of course the plane was moving but i thought at that point we were probably over the worst of it anyway and then he took off again several planes struggled on board jane's flight it was a rough ride there was a woman about three rows behind me who had to have oxygen because she was i didn't i didn't feel in any danger but she i think she probably was feeling very anxious and so they came and administered oxygen to her. And when that happened, you could kind of feel the plane, the passengers starting to be a bit more concerned. There were delays across the board, but most flights managed to take off and land successfully. There has been some astonishing pictures today of pilots doing their absolute best, but nobody is going to take an unnecessary risk. Bear in mind that we are blessed with the safest of times in aviation history. And just as a reminder, the two safest airlines in the world by the number of passengers carried without a fatality. First place, Ryanair. Second place, EasyJet. 
Eventually, conditions eased after a day when pilots' skills were tested by a ferocious storm. Well, the very latest here tonight is that all aircraft are now taking off and landing smoothly, uh, just like this one uh, behind me. Um, but there have been uh, many problems elsewhere today. Storm Eunice has left its mark on the ground with problems at Gatwick train station, a power cut there, meaning services in and out of the airport have been stopped. Well, let's speak to my colleague Josie Hannett, who's in Dover, where there have been major problems, major disruption on the ferries, Josie. That's right, Charlie. Disruption here for most of the day. Ferry services just in the last half an hour back up and running. They're not going to be back to normal for a while, though, as they try and catch up. Now, we've experienced gusts of wind of up to 77 miles per hour here and you can really feel that when you're trying to catch your breath. In the peak of those strong winds the port of Dover made the decision to close and that was to do with safety of its passengers from about nine o'clock this morning to six o'clock this evening as I said in the last half an hour no routes were going from Dover to Calais. Now disruption delays they're two words we're probably sick of hearing tonight obviously th this is not going to get back to normal as quickly as people might hope all of those people who've had ferries cancelled today they are being told to expect severe disruption here in Dover and to check before they travel. Now I've been up at the Western Heights here this well for most of the day to be honest and it really, really has been severely windy, that, those big gusts of wind. And it hasn't really put people off. We've seen lots of dog walkers, lots of people up here taking pictures for Instagram. We've seen huge waves down at Shakespeare Beach as you look over, crashing onto the harbour wall. Now, my colleague Lucinda Adam is on the Sussex coast in Brighton. Lucinda, what's it been like there today? Well, Josie, as you've said, all the warnings said that it was the coastline that would be hardest hit by Storm Eunice, and that definitely came to pass here at Brighton today as well. We saw huge waves and winds that were difficult to stand up in at times. That red warning came with the danger of flying debris, and today I've seen pieces of litter, some street signs and pebbles from the beach flying about in the wind. The Sussex Coast Guard's been patrolling the beach all afternoon, monitoring the situation and doing everything they can to keep people safe. At Brighton Marina, high tide coincided with the peak of Eunice's ferocity to batter the West Arm. The seafront was quieter than usual, but some couldn't resist a chance to capture an image of the boiling sea. Thankfully, most people have heeded our advice and stayed away from the coast, um, but we have had to respond and deal with a number of people who thought it's a good idea to go kite surfing. A few people wanted to go swimming. Um, as you can see from the conditions, it probably wasn't the wisest choice they've made. But uh, thankfully, so far, everybody uh, seems to have stayed as safe as we can. Brighton's Palace Pier, the I360 and most beachside businesses cut their losses and shut their doors. Look at the furniture, all the heat has gone. One restaurant flooded as the giant waves crashed against it. Another saw its outdoor furniture fly away in the extreme gusts. There was major disruption to rail services, but the Brighton main line did stay open. A scatter of fallen trees blocked roads across Sussex, and some car owners found they'd picked an unlucky place to park. Well, Sussex police have also said tonight that despite the challenges of the weather, today has passed without major incident. Yes, there have been fallen trees and disruption, some minor damage to property, but no injury and no major incidents. They've issued a thank you to the public for staying indoors and only travelling when absolutely necessary. That red alert is now over. We're now still in an amber warning for high wind till 9pm tonight. Tomorrow that changes to a yellow warning and businesses here are hoping to reopen and get back to some sort of normal despite some disrupted weather this weekend. OK, thanks, Lucinda. Well, so many questions about the biggest storm in a long, long time. Nina Ridge has joined me on the sofa, as you can see. Nina, so many questions to ask, isn't there, really? So, so 
Storm Eunice only formed yesterday, which is quite unusual, isn't it? It is quite unusual. It formed out the Atlantic yesterday morning and it developed really rapidly. It started off just as a little disturbance and then it just happened to engage with a really strong jet stream. So it underwent something called explosive cyclogenesis. <laughs> to get that definition, it has to fall the central pressure 24 millibars in 24 hours. I think when we analyse the data, Eunice will be nearly double that. So as it came rattling towards us, it was rapidly deepening and it just happened to cross the UK during the peak of our afternoon. Wow, of course we had a red warning, which is very rare. Why was Eunice so intense? It was really intense because we ended up with that big change in pressure and it's the change in pressure that creates the strong winds. You said red warnings are unusual. We only had one last year and then we had to go back to 2018. That's across the whole of the UK. The system that the Met Office currently have for these weather warnings came in force in 2011 and it is the first time in the South East that we've ever had a red warning. I would say a lot of our viewers probably remember the great storm of 1987. There was concern this would be comparable, was there, there were concerns and in 1987 we saw those winds gusting to 80, 90 miles an hour quite widely and some places 100 miles an hour. But that was again a rapidly developing storm. But as it started to clear away we developed something called a sting jet which is where you get some cold air being dragged down into the storm. It's a little bit like that first part of the roller coaster as you mm -hmm. accelerates the air is accelerating down through the atmosphere these storms can produce the sting jet but they're very small scale system perhaps only about 30 miles wide short-lived as well so they are really really difficult to forecast there could have been one thankfully today we stayed at that 60 to 70 mile an hour limit and those winds didn't get any stronger we didn't see a, see a sting jet today thankfully and of course we had storm dudley on mm -hmm. wednesday night was it yeah i'm sure you are asked this question all the time but how likely are we to see more extreme weather like this? Yeah, well, with climate change, it's the sort of questions that we're asking mm. ourselves all the time, and scientists are constantly analysing the data. Now, storms are very complex creatures. There's a lot that goes into forming a storm. Uh, and at the moment, there is no compelling evidence that climate change means that across the UK, things will become stormier. Some of the things that will happen with climate change could increase the storminess and other things could decrease, increase and decrease. So they tend okay. to balance each other out. So it's one that perhaps we need a little more data on as far as climate change is concerned. Okay. Thank you, Nina. We shall be chatting again a little bit uh, later on. Well, uh, Storm Eunice has left a trail of devastation with hundreds of trees uprooted. The Ashdown Forest, Bedgebury, Pinetum and Chartwell have all said their estates have been affected. Peter Whittlesey has spent the day with forest rangers trying their best to clear away the debris. Trees down and cars backing up. Those who ventured out in the Ashdown Forest today noticed how quickly the conditions changed. It, it has seemed quite calm and then suddenly you hear this whoosh and we've been dodging fallen trees to come, get to collect our friends. Uh, there's a tree across the road which is fairly substantial and uh, not, not, not easy to move without a saw I guess. Throughout the day it was the forest rangers to the rescue. Clearing trees and debris across the 7,000 acres that make up the Ashdown Forest. Well, I started at 7 o'clock this morning making sure I was ready and then at about 11.30 it was like someone turned on a wind machine and branches kept falling into the road all over the forest so I've been driving around just clearing the roads as I go and recently more larger trees have been coming down so I've got my companion with me to help me clear the road there. Take a look at this. The tree was blown over but just missed the parked car. The owner was counting her blessings. Very lucky because quite often I can park anywhere between where it is and where the tree is. Depends which angle I come in at. That is incredibly lucky. I know that is What are you going to do to celebrate? Uh, not today but I think at the weekend we might have a nice dinner. As the wind died down there was still a word of warning from the forest rangers. Urge caution when driving for the next 24 hours. So there's going to be a lot of debris on the road, so only essential travels. Try and keep away from the wooded areas in particular. The reason motorists are being told to be vigilant, not just today but tomorrow, is trees like this one. It's snapped in two but hasn't fallen to the ground, but it could happen any moment.
The tree was on private property, so the rangers couldn't fell it without permission. Wind damaged and weakened, according to the rangers, wooded areas on the forest could remain a hazard into next week, with more stormy weather forecast. Peter Whittlesey, BBC South East Today, the Ashdown Forest. Well, the roads have been a real challenge today. Andy Smith works for the AA and has been out helping respond to incidents today and he joins us live. Good evening, Andy. Lovely to talk to you. So I guess my first question really is, is how busy have you been? And give us some idea of the sort of incidents you've been responding to. Hi, Chrissy. Um, we've actually been fairly quiet today. The workload was down. So I guess that shows that people did heed the advice and stay indoors. Nonetheless, we still had work to attend to. Um, I found it was a, it was quite tiring driving around today because every corner had another obstacle. There was a tree in the way, um, branches flying everywhere. Um, in some cases, it took me almost an hour just to get to one village because every road in was, was blocked with a tree. I guess you saying that it was fairly quiet in some ways is good news because that clearly means that people have listened to the advice and have stayed at home. But for those who did venture out, like you say, there were lots of hazards. It was continuous um, and, as, as I say, quite exhausting. Um, I had branches hitting the windscreen, things falling on the roof when I was driving, um, cars swerving across the road because suddenly there was a tree that they weren't expecting. So, yeah, and, and now that it's dark, those hazards have become even worse because, you know, you can't see them approaching. Well, for those perhaps who feel they need to leave the house in the next few hours, yes, the, the worst of Storm Eunice is over, but there is still probably a lot of roads blocked. What advice would you give to people who do need to go out in their cars? The best advice is, A, don't go too fast. Keep slow down because when the wind pushes your car across the road, the slower you're going, the more control you've got. Just just be careful when you're going past cyclists and motorcyclists because they can very easily be buffeted and obviously the big lorries. And if you, you know, try and avoid towing trailers and caravans, horse boxes, because all, all these high-sided things can just add to the problems. I'm guessing your advice really would be to stay at home. 100%, unless you've got no other choice. Stay indoors and, yeah, drive okay. the storm. All right, Andy Smith from the A8, really good to uh, speak to you. OK, right, uh, Nina's back. So we're talking about gusts of winds today. Just give us some detail on how strong those gusts yeah, have been. Yeah, so they've been quite widely 60 to 70 miles an hour and they really peaked just after lunchtime today. Thankfully, at the minute, they have quietened down. We're talking about 40 to 50 miles an hour. But that gust that we saw at Gatwick of 78 miles an hour is the strongest that we've had recorded there since 20, 2002. And for many of us, even inland areas, we were up into the high 60s as well. So pretty much as forecast, those wind speeds. And at the moment, Eunice is clearing out into the east. We've got a bit of a lull doesn't last too long because through the weekend there are more weather fronts you can still see those tightly packed isobars that jet stream is still very strong so it is hurling these low pressure systems towards us thankfully not as stormy as we've seen today the not the significant weather but still winds gusting to around about 40 to 50 miles an hour and through the channel we could see 60 miles an hour so that's why the amber it runs through to nine o'clock and then tomorrow we pick up this yellow warning it runs through the day mainly covering southern parts of Kent and Sussex. Along with that, there will be some heavy rain through the day on Saturday and again on Sunday. So for this evening and overnight tonight, there may be one or two showers around. They could even be a little bit wintry at times, but eventually they'll clear their way through and temperatures tomorrow morning will start the day at two to three degrees. So it is a chilly start to the day and we may even have some early sunshine. But once again, the winds will start to pick up and we'll see some rain arriving around the middle part of the day and into the early part of the afternoon. A spell of heavy rain will push its way southeastwards with some showers following on behind. I've already mentioned the wind strongest through the channel where they could be gusting to 60 miles an hour at times and temperatures tomorrow at around about 9 to 10 degrees.
So for Saturday evening, again, a little bit of a lull, dry, although the cloud will tend to increase. It's a pretty overcast start for Sunday morning, so not as cold with temperatures at around 6 to 7 degrees. It will be a breezy day, those winds gusting to 40 to 50 miles an hour. And it is later on Sunday that we're expecting some showery rain to start to put it, push its way in from the west with again those temperatures reaching 12 to 13 degrees so at least on Sunday it is a little bit milder and what about then as we head into Monday and Tuesday well Monday is looking a little drier but still quite breezy however as we head into Tuesday yet again we're heading out into the Atlantic because there is going to be some more wet and with windy weather on the way. It's looking really quite unsettled the weather over the next few days. So whilst we've lost the significant wind gusts of today, through the day on Saturday, we still could see one or two problems with that yellow warning in force. Some rain to come through the afternoon again later on Sunday, some rain Monday, a little drier, and it starts to turn slightly cooler as well as we go through next week. So we're out of the woods, but still lots of weather to talk about. Busy, busy. <laughs> right, uh, thanks, Nina. We'll be before we go, let's just get a sense of where the region is on a day of major disruption to roads, train services and cross-channel travel and thousands now without power. Amanda joins us again. You've been out and about. Just sum up for us how you think the South East has dealt with this today, what it's endured. Well, I think the key thing tonight is that 113 households across Surrey, Sussex and Kent are still without power. UK Power Networks say they're working as fast as they can to try and reconnect people, but they are facing difficulties because so many roads are still closed. And also they have safety concerns about sending their engineers up the electricity pole to repair the overhead cables while the winds are still quite high. Now, of course, many people heeded the advice not to travel today where at all possible. Anyone trying to get in or out of Kent by train face major difficulties. A thousand services were cancelled. We have just heard that tonight the Charing Cross to Dartford line is due to reopen soon, but we're not expecting the other ones to be back up and running this evening. And of course, with so many trees falling, we had road closures all over the region. Bridges to the Sheppey Crossing, the QE2, causing long delays on our roads. Buses were cancelled as well. We know all about the problems that Gatwick and the Port of Dover face too. And of course, although the weather is improving, it's a big clean up ahead and the disruption is set to continue for days to come. Thanks, Amanda. Still a lot going on then. Now, you can get Storm Eunice updates throughout the day and over the weekend on BBC Radio Kent, BBC Radio Sussex and BBC Radio Surrey. We've also got regular updates at bbc.co.uk slash Kent, Sussex and Surrey. You can also get in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Or, of course, you can email us at southeasttoday at bbc.co.uk. Right, a busy show. That is it for now. Of course, we will be back with a further update just after 10. Until then, you stay safe. Goodbye.